Lookout spot an enemy vessel only four miles away. Erling Game decides the small boat does not warrant an expensive torpedo. He expects Silverside's deck gun will do the job. From its crew of 70, young officers and sailors hustle to their battle stations for the first time. Their three-inch 50 caliber gun can fire 24-pound armor-piercing shells at up to three rounds per minute at a range of nearly 15,000 yards. Hurling game unleashes his attack. Fire! Fire! But the Japanese boat returns fire, and a gun battle erupts. Elevate 15! Fire! Fire! The Ebisu Maru number no. 5 is a 131 ton wooden fishing trawler. Even civilian ships like fishing boats been armed to defend Japan. Fire! Japanese machine gun bullets whiz past the sailors and ping off the conning tower. Basically, they are armed, uh, mainly the machine guns, and two or three, you know, the depth charges. And, of course, the, the radio. I don't think the silver sides had the right idea of the mission of the ship. Burlingame has underestimated the enemy. So at this point, it's all hands on deck. Not only are the gunners working topside, but crews down below are literally ripping open ammunition boxes and forming an ammo chain to hand these projectiles up from the submarine all the way up so that they can be fired from the gun. Fire! As, as the gunfight is unfolding, the crew's shots are getting more and more accurate. So they're actually punching into this Japanese trawler, and it suddenly erupts in flames. Rather than run away, ultimately turns and starts charging toward the silver sides. The Ebisu Maru continues to fire its machine gun on the submarine. So the crew on deck is having to take cover uh, as bullets are literally zinging past. One of these bullets ultimately hits one of the men in his helmet, and he says it's like a sledgehammer. Knocks him down, knocks him out. Despite the injury, the ammo chain continues, the shells passing from hand to hand. But then another crew member, Mike Harbin, turns to pass a shell to the next loader in line, and he is hit too. It takes a second. Mike Harbin drops to the deck, and the other crews continue to hand the shells off one after the other. And then everybody stops and looks down and realizes that Mike Harbin has gone down, and there's blood coming out on the deck around him. In shock, the crew freezes, despite the ongoing firefight. To snap them out of it, Worthington unholsters his pistol, lowers it by his side, and he shouts to the men, get back on that damn gun, or I'll shoot everything. Let's move now! Load it, let's go! Keep firing fire! Finally, engulfed in flames, the picket boat stops firing. Burlingame calls off the attack and expects it to sink, but it does not. In the first battle of their first patrol, a crew member has been killed. It's something that haunts Burlingame. The Ebisu Mara wasn't worth the price of a torpedo, but in the end, it cost much more.